Hello and welcome to Coldwater, Ohio for today's matchup between the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Marion Local Flyers. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and we have the pleasure of calling the first of two games today in the Strikeout Cancer Classic. And it is an absolutely beautiful day here at 11 a.m. start. Feels great out on an early May day. And excited to call some softball today with you, Dave. Nate, it's great to be here with you this afternoon, mid-morning, I guess, 11 o'clock-ish. But you're right, beautiful day, 62 degrees out here on a Saturday. Let's play some softball between these conference rivals, Coldwater and Marion Local. Let's take a look at the lineup first for the visiting Marion Local Flyers. They are going to look like this. Overall record coming into today, 5 and 14 overall, 1 and 5 in the MAC Conference. Leading off is going to be the junior Cameron Swain and playing left field. Batting second, number 21, Allison Dirksen. Batting third, Hannah Rindler. Batting fourth, Kaylee Beike. Batting fifth, Emerson Bruins. Batting sixth is Ava Evers. And batting seventh, Natalie Evers. Batting eighth, Kelsey Brigman. And batting ninth is Lydia Hess. Here is a leadoff hitter, Cameron Swain. She comes in with a 431 average. And she takes the first pitch for a strike. Our officiating crew, Larry Lloyd behind the dish, Steve Trout on the bases. Cameron Swain, as you said, 431 leads the team in batting average. Second pitch, batting down to third, first out of the game. Nice play there at third base by Kennedy Voskel. You got to be ready in the hot corner. She was fielded that on the hop, throws it to first to Jordan Hemelgarn to retire Swain, the second team all MAC selection. Stepping up to the plate is the pitcher, Allison Dirksen. She comes in with a 361 batting average, having a good year from the plate. First pitch is in, as be taken as a strike. Nice change up there by Madison Wendell, the all everything in the circle for Coldwater. We'll talk about her throughout the contest. Her stats are just phenomenal, Nate. Second pitch lined out of play down the first baseline. Taking a look at the Coldwater defense in right field is Avery Kanapke. Pitching today, Madison Wendell having a phenomenal season on the pitcher's mound and on the plate. I'm sure we will talk plenty about her throughout the day. Behind the plate is Claire Steinke catching first base, Jordan Hemelgarn. Center field, Kendra Clooney. Second base, Rachel Schroyer. As the third pitch is a little low and outside for ball one, one two count. At third base, we already called her number, Kennedy Voskel. Shortstop, Dana Zahn. DHing today will be O'Reilly Eels when they come up to the plate. And out in left is Sydney Grisham. So a one two count on Dirksen as Wendell is getting ready to deliver this pitch. Like we mentioned, this is the first of two games here in the Strikeout Cancer Classic. This pitch is lined down to the first baseman as Dirksen will be re uh, retired. Uh, nice play down there by Helmogarn. And Jordan Helmogarn fields that, touches the bag herself. Dirksen, an honorable mention, Max selection. So at the top of the lineup for Marion Local, a lot of experience. Wendell goes right at him, gets both of them retired. Now we go to Hannah Rindler, a freshman, batting 250 in the three spot for the Flyers. Rindler takes the first ball low and inside. She's ahead in the count 1-0. Wendell checking the wrist guard. She comes set, pitches on its way, and this is gonna be a strike. Yeah, Madison Wendell in the circle, the player of the year in the MAC last year for the Coldwater Cavaliers. They were unblemished in league play at 7-0, conference champions. A lot of that riding on her arm there in the circle. And you can see she brings she brings a little bit of heat with that fastball, Nate. Yes, she does. Got herself back ahead in the count. One and two. Two down here in the opening inning. Pitch is on its way and swung through by Rindler. And that is going to bring the top of the first to a close. Coldwater coming to the plate. First at-bats when we return on WOSF. 
Welcome back to Coldwater as the Cavaliers are going to come to the plate for their first at bat of the day. Their lineup is going to look like this. Leading off is Avery Kanapke. In second, Madison Wendell. Third, batting Claire Steinke. Batting in fourth is Jordan Hemmelgar. First pitch is going to be a strike. Batting fifth tonight is going to be Kendra Clooney. Batting sixth, Rachel Schroyer. Batting seventh, Kennedy Bosco. In eighth is Dana Zahn. And batting ninth is Riley Eels. And batting tenth is Sydney Grisha. As the count goes to even at one and one. On the mound for Marion local, Allison Dirksen. Yeah, Dirksen brings an ERA of 4.82 into today's contest. Popped up in the shallow center field in to make the play as there is a one down. Defensively for a Marion local. Out in left is Cameron Swain. As we mentioned, Allison Dirksen is on the mound. At third is Handler Rindler. First base is Kaylee Beike. Center field, just making uh, the first out was Emerson Bruins. Second base is Ava Evers. Shortstop, Natalie Evers. Catching today is Kelsey Brigerman, and in the right field is Lydia Hess. To the plate is Madison Wendell. Wendell legs out that single. Wendell, we mentioned everything she can do on the mound. Didn't get a whole lot of time there to talk about what she does at the plate, but she comes in today uh, after 81 plate appearances with a 508 batting average. Yeah, that's very impressive. That means a hit every two times to the plate. Uh, you don't ju you don't see that maybe at the beginning of the season, but not after you've got 21 games in. That's really impressive. She reaches on the air here, but any way to get on base in the early innings, that's what you want to do. And uh, she is on first base with Claire Steinke, the first team. Max selection from last year, stepping into the box. She sports a 328 batting average. So Stanky ahead, in the, or Stanky, excuse me, ahead in the count, 1-0. She gets this one, rips it by the shortstop, out into the left field, gets by the left fielder. Wendell coming around third. They're going to send her, and she is going to stay up as she crosses the plate as Coldwater gets the early 1-0 lead. Stanky with the RBI double between center and left field. As you said, Wendell scores all the way from first base. And if you're a Cavs fan, it's great medicine to get on the scoreboard early. Give Steinke, again, the RBI, the double to center left. First pitch into the number four hitter, Jordan Hemmelgarn, is a ball. It's a little bit high. Hemmelgarn comes in today, batting 333. Second on the team in that category behind Wendell. This is going to be ball two down in the dirt. Cold water with the early one nothing lead. Runner on second, one out here in the bottom of the first. These two teams hooked up back on April 27th. And in that contest, Coldwater came away with a 7-0 victory. Hemelgarn swings over that pitch. Of course, that would be in league action. Again, Marion Local sports a one and six at, uh, record in the league. And Coldwater stands at four and three this year. Dirksen doing a nice job fighting back to even the count at 2 2. Hemelgarn trying to get an RBI. Dirksen's pitch bounces in there to make it a full count. Allison Dirksen, she was in the circle last night as the Marion Local Flyers played Versailles in league action, came away with a hard luck loss, 2-0 to zero to the Tigers. There's con what contact went right to the shortstop, but couldn't hold on to it as that was a hard hit ball. Going to drop that one. So Hemmelgarn is going to end up on first as Steinke moves over to third. Yep. Hard hit, but right at the shortstop. Going to have an error on that play. And that puts runners on the corners for Kendra Clooney. She brings a nice average into the game as well in the five spot, batting 306. See if Coach Arns puts anything on here. Looks to play for the big inning. Hamilgard does take off for second on the hit and run, but this one goes foul. Makes the count 0 and 1. No thought of a bunt in this situation on that first pitch as Clooney was locked in and swinging. Coach Arns 
Flashing the signals down in the third base coaching box. First good pitch on its way. This one's going to be popped up. Evers at shortstop able to catch that one. And Natalie Evers with a nice put out there. Big out, the first out of the game for the Flyers. So you saw Evers not able to handle the line drive on the uh, batter before, but gets the second out here as Durst goes to work on number 16, Rachel Shorter. She's trying to minimize the damage here in the first. Shorter, a 237 average coming into today's game. Sends this one back up the middle. One run is going to score. As Hemelgarn is able to get over to second before the throw comes in. And Rachel Schroyer picks up an RBI. Batting, baseman, nice piece of hitting there. Driving that ball right up the middle is one Rachel Schroyer. Give her the RBI. And runners on first and second now with one out. First pitch in to Vosco. A seven hitter goes in there for a strike as Durskin's ahead in the count. Durskin's a little high on that pitch as the count goes to even one and one. As we said again, Dirksen, hard luck loser, two to nothing last night against Versailles. She went all seven innings, only gave up four hits. A little bit of backspin on that ball as it got to the third baseman. Been able to handle it as Rindler closes her glove around that one for the third out of the inning. After one, cold water on top, two to nothing. We'll be back with the second inning here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsors Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. After one inning of play, Coldwater on top, a two to nothing behind a couple of timely hits there in the first. Yeah, and twos were the hot number there here on Derby Day in the bottom of the first. Coldwater picked up two runs. They had two hit, hits. Mary Local committed two errors and Coldwater left two runners on base. We'll see if Marion Local can jump back here a little bit. You know, this flyer squad stepping into the plate as Kaylee Beike at 233, your first baseman. They're a young squad, Nate. They only start one senior in Ava Evers. And uh, again, a bright future. Uh, not a real good record this year, but with the young players that they have, they're gaining a lot of experience. There's a one, two, three inning for Coldwater there in the first as Wendell goes back to work. She is pumping it in there with some heat. Mikey able to get a piece of that one, sends that one back for strike one. Yeah, Madison Wendell just phenomenal in the circle. 16 and eight as a freshman with a 2.4 ERA. 227 strikeouts as a freshman. She's a junior now, so I'm running through her stats as a sophomore. She was 23 and three with a 1.29 ERA and 278 K Ks as a junior. She sports a very solid record and is looking at 700 strikeouts in her career. Very impressive. Yeah, absolutely, as you saw right there, is able to get another swing and a miss as Mikey swings, Mikey swings through that one to make the count one and two. Wendell's pitch is on its way, and that is strike three. As Kaylee Beike not able to catch up with the fastball coming in from Madison Wendell. So now Emerson Brune steps to the plate. She has a 232 average. And as you mentioned, a young team for Marion Local, just a sophomore. So when you have these young teams, you're going to have some growing pains. It's just a part of it, but some gaining some very good experience throughout the season. Yeah, no doubt about that, Nate. And, you know, Coldwater, they're not real old themselves. They start two seniors in their lineup. It's just that Madison Wendell and the rest of the Mac wish she had a 12 by her name, but she's just a junior. She's going to be back doing all this again next year. The stats again that she's putting 
putting in the book inside the circle there as a pitcher. Just phenomenal. And uh, Coldwater looking forward to tournament action as a three seed. They'll play the, uh, the winner of Northwest Conference foes, Allen East and Bluffton. And that game will be at Coldwater on Friday, May 12th, the sectional final action. They drew the bye as the three seed. So Emerson Bruins now faces an 0-2 count as she bunted through the first pitch, swung through the second. I like that thought of trying to put the ball, put the bat on the ball any way possible, looking at that bunt in the first, first pitch of the at-bat. Was unable to connect, but gave it a good look. And Wendell right now is dealing. That is three straight strikeouts as Emerson Brune is going to have to head back to the dugout. And Ava Evers steps to the plate. A senior batting 226, manning second base today. We'll try to see if she can't get on base for, the, uh, for her team for the first time today. And you're right, she is dealing. I think she's picked up a little velocity since the first inning. She's, she and her catcher, Claire Steinke, they are definitely on the same page right now. Madison Wendell on ahead in the count once again, 0-1. And that time, I think Ava Evers was just trying to make some, or Eva, excuse me, was just trying to make some contact as she swung through that one. Not able to do so, it's 0-2 count. Ava watches this one go high. Nice job of laying off of that rice ball right there, Nate. That's a hard pitch to take, especially 0-2, and it looks like a big balloon coming right up at your eyes. She did a nice job staying off of it. See what she does here. That uh, one looks like it might have been a little bit outside. So count is even, 2-2. Two, two. two outs here in the second with Coldwater on top two. Wendell trying to close out the second, trying to see if she can't go three for three on strikeouts, and she does. That is four straight strikeouts for Madison Wendell, and Marion Local goes down in order. We will step aside, and when we come back, bottom of the second, Coldwater coming to the plate. We'll be back on WOSF. Welcome back to Coldwater, Ohio, as the Cavaliers are back to the plate, trying to add on to their 2 nothing lead. Kennedy Vosco takes the first pitch, pulls it foul. Vosco, a senior, comes into today, batting 183. She works against Allison Dirksen. Dirksen takes something off of that pitch that goes in as she Vosco swing underneath it, send it back, make it an 0-2 count. Yeah, nice pitcher. I, I do think it's Dana Zahn in the batter's box, number eight. But Dixon, you're right. She's really mixing up her speeds. She, she doesn't, she's not a flamethrower. And when you understand what you are, then you take what you are and use it to the best of your benefit. And she gets a strikeout right there against Zahn for the first out of the inning. And you are right. Already the first mistake in the scorebook for me today. Getting out of the way early. But Dana Zahn is going to take a seat after striking out. So Riley Eels is going to step to the plate. Eels, a designated player for the Cavs. Chases one right there. Dixon gets her to swing at a pitch out of the strike zone to get ahead 0 and 1. There's another one right like that, Nate. Just Dixon pounding the bottom of the zone and Eels is chasing it a little bit. See if she goes to the same spot here, 0-2, or comes up and in. That time she brings that one up, and Eels watches for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dirksen as Coldwater's going to head back to the top of the lineup as Avery Kanapke yeah, is going to come to the plate. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Between the two pitchers, we've seen six strikeouts in a row now as they both are settling in a little bit. Kanapke that time, you tell had a little bit of a hard time with the timing. Looked like she wanted to start going, but then had to swing a little bit late. So awkward swing on strike one has Dirksen ahead in the count. This one's gonna be fouled back for strike two. So Dirksen trying to find her rhythm here in the second. We saw her struggle a little bit. Um, 
you know, there were some hard hit balls in the first inning, but she settled in nicely here in the second. Yeah, a couple errors in that top or bottom of the first. Neither run earned against her as a result. But again, she's really just moving the ball around, up in the zone, down in the zone. And it's really two different styles of pitching that we're Absolutely. seeing here. Wendell wants yes. to just blow you by. She has such a good fastball. And Dirksen, on the other hand, is trying to move it around with the placement. But they're having the same result as both teams go in order here in the second. Nice play by Ava Evers there to retire the stop. After two, cold water on top, 2-0. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. Today's game is also brought to you by Hillsman Automotive and Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. We appreciate all of our sponsors and everything they do to help bring the best high school coverage to you in the area. Top of the third. Madison Wendell has just been dealing here over the last uh, inning plus. She's going to take the mound, and Marion Local is going to see if they can't get their first hit of the afternoon. Natalie yeah. Evers comes to the plate, batting 262. The shortstop is set and awaits the first pitch. We saw the last inning, they tried to see if they couldn't get the bunt down and catch the Coldwater defense off guard. They tried again, but not able to connect. Yeah, again, I like the philosophy that Coach Mindy Fiesel's implementing right here. We got to put the bat on the ball any way we can. And when you're facing a premier pitcher like Madison Wendell, the bunt is definitely a weapon to try and do that. She squares up again, bunts a foul. So Natalie now even count of one and one. So back to back bunt. Um, tries that time. We'll see what they decide to do here. Yeah, interesting situation right now. Do you stay with the bunt with the 1-1 count? Everybody on the cold water side knows it's coming. I, I like the thought, let her swing. But right there at the wrist, a tough one to lay off of. Might have been a ball, but man, you got to make a decision quick. And in that situation, Evers, Natalie style, decided to swing. And Unable to connect, and Wendell's ahead, one and two. This one's going to be a little bit high. Good eye by Natalie Evers to let that one go through. You notice most of the Marion local players are setting up way back into the batter's box, trying to give themselves a little bit of extra time as they know the power that Wendell has with her pitches. Yeah, yeah. I love that thought, Nate. <laughs> Like Major League Baseball, that leadoff hitter when he comes up to the to the box, you know, the grounds crew has done everything they can to make it perfect. And what's the first thing he does? He wipes out that line at the back of the batter's box in order to get as deep as possible. Two two count. Wendell checks the wrist. She's set. Pitch is on its way in strike three. So the strikeout in a row continues as they've now reached five for Wendell. You know, back on April 3rd for WSN, I was supposed to do a game between Lincoln View and this Coldwater Cav uh, lady softball team. It didn't happen. Uh, Coldwater had some sickness and they had a band trip, I believe, as well. They didn't have enough players to compete that night. Wayne Trace filled in, so we still had a great game on WSN. But Wendell was going to pitch that night, and I was looking forward to it. And... Uh, a little disappointed that unable to come away and watch her play back then. But, man, what a treat we're seeing here today, Nate. She can really, really bring it. Now the freshman, Kelsey Bruggeman, catcher. She is at the plate. Down in the count, 0-1. Wendell delivers. That is ball to bring the count to 1-1. One one. Wendell toes the rubber, pitches on its way, and strike two. Uh, just speed and power that time by Wendell gets that one across. I really like Brueggemann's swing right there, though. She was locked in, had her shoulder, front shoulder, clued in on the softball, just unable to connect. Good cut. Brueggemann able to get her 
the bat onto that one to get it out of play to stay alive. Yeah, again, quick wrists and everything. She's coming through the zone solidly, but man, Wendell just brings a lot of heat there. She's found it off to the right side. Beautiful day here in cold water. Wind blowing out slightly, but temperatures definitely turning after a little bit of a cold snap earlier in the week. Yeah, it's been an interesting spring. Teams have had the challenge of getting contests in. It was cold at the beginning of the season, then it warmed up and was really nice. And you're like, hey, we're gonna have warm weather the, the rest of the way. And then we had about a week and a half where it was just downright cold. And we're coming out of that right now. It's good to see these teams on the field. Pitch on its way. And that's gonna make the count two and two. I've been doing a great job to stay alive here and make a window work. The Strikeout Cancer Classic, again, Coldwater and Marion Local playing right here and behind the right field fence, we can see St. Mary's playing uh, the other opponent in today's um, doubleheader quad, if you will, Fort Recovery. The winners will play in game two right here on WSN as well. Another foul ball by Kelsey. This time is down the third baseline. She stays alive, 2-2 count. See Wendell take something off of that pitch, trying to see if she couldn't uh, trick Bruggeman that time to swing through that one. Yeah, Bruggeman's just having an outstanding at bat right here. Locked in, I like her tenacity. That's a freshman in that batter's box, Nate. Full count, that one's gonna be a ball. Bruggeman works her way back down 0-2, gets the walk as she stayed alive with some timely foul balls, got things working. And now Marion Local has their first base runner of the afternoon. Yeah, the first base runner of the afternoon here in the top of the third, that takes away the perfect game. We're gonna have a runner for the catcher, number 11, Brooke Evers. Running for Bruggeman. Now the right fielder, Lydia Hess, steps to the plate. As Marion Local now trying to see if they can't get another batter on and to turn over the lineup. In the left-handed side, the left side of that batter's box, let's see if she's gonna try and slap it or if she's just gonna lock in with her feet and stay steady. She does try to slap action, fouls that one off. Again, with Wendell Speed, you gotta bring everything just a little quicker and commit sooner as a slapper, and that can be a real challenge. Great, great challenge here for Lydia Hess. Great opportunity to compete against Wendell. Bosco playing way in, anticipating that slap or that bunt down the third baseline. As Hess goes through that uh, pitch, so it's an 0-2 count. Yep, she offered Larry Lloyd with the strike. The home plate umpire. This one's gonna be a ball, one and two the count is. Wendell's trying to start a new K streak. And again, 0-2 pitch, not gonna give anything too fat, if you will. Gonna make the batter chase it. Hess does a nice job of laying off right there. Wendell sends that one in. Hess can't lay off. Check swing, she goes around. And that is gonna be strike out number six for Wendell. We go to the top of the order. Cameron Swain comes to the plate for Marion Local. Grounded out to first, her first time up. See if she can put the bat on the ball again like she did in that first A-B. So Coach Fiesel elects to have left-hander, left-hander, nine spot to the one spot. Swain again puts that back foot right on the chalk of the batter's box. Swain able to get a piece of that pitch, sends that one back out of play. 0-2 count. Wendell checking the wristband once again. Toes the rubber, pitch on its way. And this one's gonna be a ball. 1-2, yep. two, two out here in the top of the third. That was an outside pitch, directed pitch the whole way as Stanky set up outside of the Strike zone, doing it again here. Able to get bat on ball this time, only able to get one out. That's all they needed though. So nice. after three 
or two and a half innings of a play. Coldwater still on top, two nothing. They're gonna come to the plate, see if they can add to their lead. Coldwater coming to the plate with a two nothing lead, looking to add to it. Top hitter on this team, Madison Wendell coming to the plate to try to get things going here to start the inning. Wendell sends a rocket to the fence. She's going to head to second. Throw's going to come in, and Wendell will have the stand-up double, showing you right there why she is such a prolific hitter. Yeah, you, again, a 508 hitter. She reached on an air in the first inning, so law of averages, and her average says she's going to get a hit, and she does. Doubles to the left field fence to start things off here in the top of the third. Not an RBI situation, but last night, Wendell broke the record, the career record for um, cold water with having, uh, she, she's taken the lead over one Katie Harlemer. Now the interesting thing is Claire Steinke, who's stepping into the box right there and fouls that first pitch off the third, ba third base line, she's four behind. Madison Wendell. So they're battling each other. Here's one into the air. That one's going to go to the fence just over the outstretched arms of the center fielder. Wendell had to wait to see if it was going to get caught, but she's still going to end up crossing the plate as she did back in the first as well. And Coldwater is on top of three nothing thanks to the double RBI double by Claire Steinke. Yeah, so she just cut the lead to three by knocking in her teammate who's in the lead. <laughs> Uh, one Madison Wendell, but they change places, uh, exchange places there. Stanky and Wendell. So Hemelgarn is at the plate. She reached base back in the first, but was stranded at second. And this one is going to be a little bit high. Makes the count one and one. Allison Dirksen sends the pitch in. This one's going to bounce in front of the plate. No throw down to third as Nike will get the stolen base. Yeah. Call that a wild pitch as the ball hit in front of the plate, as you said, Nate, to advance the runner. Helmogarn sends this one. It's a fair ball down the right field line. Helmogarn's going to go for two, getting it in quickly, but not going to be able to get her, so that is three straight doubles for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Plates two runs, and they're on top, 4 nothing. Yeah, nice piece of hitting as Hemelgarn goes with the pitch, drives it down the right field line, and three batters have come to the plate thus far for Coldwater, and as you said, all three have reached with doubles. That brings Kendra Clooney to the plate. She popped out to shortstop her first at bat. Clooney swings over top of that pitch. It's a little bit more speed on that one from Dirksen. And she, she now makes the count even at one and one. You know, we mentioned where the Mary local Flyers were setting up in the batter's box, and when you look at Coldwater, it's kind of the opposite, and it just goes to the different styles that we see of pitchers. We talked about the speed and the power of Wendell. Dirksen getting it done in a different style. She's more of the placement, being able to change speeds and fluctuates that, and that's what has given some of the Coldwater players issues. So see them setting up way in front of the batter's box. Clooney gets a bat on that one, out at first, throw over to third, not in time, so advances the runner. But Marion Local gets the first out of the inning. A productive out there for the plate, Coldwater. 16. As you said, the runner advances on the play. And you're right, Allison Dirksen, she's a sophomore. She's got to be studying Wendell as she's, when she's in the dugout and thinking about how can I increase my speed a little bit as I continue my high school pitching career. And the, every day, and every pitch, and every game gets a little more experience. Bottom of the third, Coldwater on top, four nothing. Erickson's pitch taken to the shortstop, going to be fielded, thrown across, but nice hustle that time by 
Uh, number 16, Rachel Schroyer. And she's able to reach and gets the RBI as Hemmelgarn comes in to score. Infield single for Schroyer. Hustles no, down the line, beats it out, and gets the RBI in the process. So, again, one out in the inning and another run scores as Coldwater looks to put a crooked number up here in the bottom of the third, having scored three and increasing the lead to five to zero. Kennedy Voskel is at the plate. Fouls this one off, third base side. Just a great facility here at Coldwater as well. Eric Goodwin, the AD, great hospitality. Does things right down here in Cavalier country. They've done some renovations here on the diamond. They've always played at this location. Hard hit ball, nice job being fielded as it, they do get the lead out at a second. A little bit high on that throw down to first, though. So Vosco is going to reach on the air. But Riddler did a great job of fielding that ball and making sure that they got the lead runner at second. You're right. The five to four in your scorebook to get Schroyer at second. And Vosco does reach on the fielder's choice. But again, just to get back uh, the facility here, we're in a beautiful press box here on the third base side. And the dugouts, they've added the enclosures this year. Just again, Eric Goodwin does it right down here at Coldwater and a beautiful softball facility. So Dana Zahn at the plate. She struck out her last time up. Finds herself with an even count right now at one and one with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Coldwater on top, five nothing as they've already played at three here in the inning. Zahn watches that one go high and outside to make the count two and one. This one's going to be fouled off. Evens the count at two. So as you said, a two-two count. Defensively, the Flyers really, really looking at Zahn to pull the ball, which he has and fouling it off. And Zahn swings over top of that one. That is going to be another strikeout for Dirksen. And that's going to bring the third inning to a close. After three innings of play, Coldwater has a commanding lead. They are on top five to nothing. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth here on WOSF. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsors Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. This game is also brought to you by Hillsman Automotive and Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. We appreciate all our sponsors and everything they do to help bring you the most uh, or the best local coverage of high school sports in the area. Allison Dirksen's going to lead off for Marion Local, and she ropes one down the first baseline. A hard hit ball that stays inside. As Allison Dirksen now has the first hit for the Flyers. Exactly, and we didn't, the superstition didn't come into play, Nate. We didn't jinx Wendell at all. We didn't talk about her having a no-hitter up to this point and spoiling it. They, the cold water faithful cannot blame that on us. So now Wendell. Goes to work, Rindler looked at the butt, but pulls that one back for ball one. Yeah, it was real solid contact by Dirksen, driving that ball by Hemmelgarn. She didn't have a chance. Solid single, leadoff runner on. That's good medicine. Let's see if the Flyers can push Dirksen around to score their first run. Try to bunt one more time. That one, as she bunted over the top, comes in for a strike. Dirksen on the hit and run. It's hung out that time, so she's going to go back to the dugout, and the bases back go back to being clear for the Cavaliers as they now have one out here in the fourth. Yeah, I got to believe maybe a signal got missed there. Again, tough, tough situation to put your runner in motion against a pitcher like Wendell, where it's hard to make contact because she's so solid. So now Rindler, one-two count. Let's that one go by for ball two. Two 
2 count, one down here in the fourth. As you see Madison Wendell check the wristband. Yeah, you alluded to that earlier and right there as well. That's how they put flasher signals in, the coach on the bench. It might be the head coach, might be an assistant in with Allison Bruns. But at any way, shape, or form, they go with the numbering system. So the coach is giving the pitcher and the catcher a number. Sometimes you see that wristband on all the players out in the field as well because then they, depending on what the pitch is called, can be thinking, okay, we're going with the fastball. They might be a little late. Going with a changeup might catch up with it. And they can be thinking which way that ball might come at them if it does on that particular pitch. You see that. And they, you also see the old-fashioned way where a coach might just be maybe touching their nose, ear from the dugout, signaling to the catcher, then signals it to the pitcher. Again, a lot of different variations on how to get everybody on the same page. Anna Riddler staying alive with that full count, just getting a piece of that one to send it back. Wendell's pitch on its way. Riddler able to get a piece of it, sends it down to third base. Can't quite handle that one. As a Kennedy Vosco was trying to come up with the pick and throw, but couldn't quite get the ball in her glove. So the second base runner of the inning for Mary Local is on first base. And it goes back to maybe what you had talked about, the missed signal that may have happened earlier in the inning. You know, maybe costing Mary and Local an opportunity to have a runner in scoring position right yeah, now. Yeah, they could have two on with nobody out as Rindler has the infield single. Um, Vosco had to go hard to her left. It would have been a great play if she'd have been able to come up with it. Uh, unable to do so, as we said, an infield single for Hannah Rindler. Runner on first with one out. And Coach Braun is out in the circle to talk to the infield a little bit here. Get them on the same page. Get them locked in and keep attacking the, with the pitching and the fielding as Kaylee Burt Beike comes to the plate, the first baseman for Marion Local. Struck out her first at bat. So the junior first baseman steps up to the plate trying to see if she can't get her team a little bit of a rally here. Wendell back on the mound, getting ready to go to work. Pitches in, going to be fouled back. Takes the count to 0-1. Bikey with a real good cut right there. And again, we talked about some of the Marion local players getting to the back of the box. Bikey chooses not to. Again, you have to be comfortable in there first and foremost. So she's making a decision. Ah, I don't really feel comfortable moving around a whole lot. So I'm going to stay right where I'm at and just lock in and battle. Gets a good cut right there, but Wendell goes ahead 0-2 now. And Mikey finds herself in a tough spot now, down 0-2 to Wendell. We've seen Wendell be able to change the speed on those pitches um, with a lot of success here so far in this game. But that time she just stays with it. Mikey got a piece of it, but the catcher hangs on. And that is going to be out number two here in the fourth. Yeah, so... Coach Braun's discussion out there in the circle refocused one Madison window, if not the whole team. She comes right at Mikey and sets her down. Emerson Bruins to the plate now. Two outs, one on. Wendell down in the count, 1-0. -oh. And that hasn't happened very often. Wendell has thrown a lot of first pitch strikes. This one is connected down to second base, but Troyer not able to hold on to it. She booted it as a hard hit right at her glove. Looked like it might have bounced off the heel of the glove and went to her left. So Marion Local now with two on, two outs, trying to see if they can't uh, get one across the plate here in the fourth. Yeah, they're doing a nice job second time through the lineup, timing Wendell down a little bit better, making contact as Bruins reaches on the air. Runners on first and second. Big opportunity for a second baseman, senior number 13, Ava Evers, to possibly get herself an RBI. Wendell's first pitch is high. And 
Back-to-back -back batters now where we've seen her fall down into the count after the first pitch, 1-0. Last time it led to a hard hit ball. So Marion Local hoping for the same outcome here. Pitch is on its way. This one's gonna be fouled off as Evers was just able to get a piece of that one. Yeah, Riddler on second. Bruins on first. You're gonna be aggressive on the base pass with two outs. Any contact, you're gonna be moving hard. See if you can make third base. Just a pit stop on the way to home will be one Hannah Rindler if the ball gets out into the grass. Pitch is on its way. Once again, Heaver's just able to get a piece of that one. Makes the count one and two. One and two, two outs. Bot or top of the fourth, excuse me. This is where you got to shorten up a little bit. Maybe get off the knob on that bat, choke up just a little, try and make contact. Pitches in and Ever swings right through that one. Another hard pitch from Madison Wendell leads to a, what would be her eighth K here of the afternoon. We move to the bottom of the fourth. Coldwater on top, five to nothing. Marion Local coming to the plate. Coldwater at bat now as number six. Riley Eel steps to the plate. This one's going to be fouled off for strike one. Puts it right in the Marion local dugout. The coach is over there scattering. Again, in the top of the fourth, Marion local, they had two hits, left two on base. I don't, unable to push them around, but they had a solid inning as far as denning the column, the hit column against Wendell. And for Coldwater, we're 9 1 2 with Eels, Kanapke, and Wendell. First three batters. Eel struck out her first at bat. Finds herself down in the count one and two after that foul ball. And again, we see that foul ball go down the first baseline. The renovations, again, we spoke of, a new press box, enclosed dugouts. Uh, don't have the fence down either line yet. And they'll get that here. Coach Goodwin, or Eric Goodwin will take care of that. And they'll have that, I'm sure, by next season. But just part of the process. Eels fouled that one off. Catcher held on, so that is going to be a strikeout as Eels is going to have to go back to the dugout. And the lineup is going to turn over for Coldwater. Avery Kanapke will come up.
after the big home run by Avery Kanapke, and they get out of the inning without any more damage. Yeah, pitcher's best friend, the double play right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsors Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. Marion Local coming to bat here in the top of the fifth. Find themselves down six to nothing. Two in the first for Coldwater, three in the third, and then a big home run by Avery Kanapke there in the bottom of the fourth is the scoring for Coldwater. Marion Local looking to get something going, and they're gonna have the leadoff runner on base. Gonna reach on the air, but again, when you can make contact, you're gonna make things happen. Put the pressure on the defense right there, and that's what happens as Evers reaches safely. That is the first, no, I take that back, the last inning as well, the leadoff hitter reached for Marion Local. Again, they're starting to make a little bit of noise and see if they can push Evers around and score. Able to get the bat on the ball that time, but it's going to roll foul for strike one as Kelsey Bruggerman was trying to get the bunt down to get the uh, runner over. Again, maybe against a different pitcher, you think, well, we, we can't give away outs right now, but you just got to continue to put the pressure on Coldwater to field the ball and not let Wendell get strikeouts. Tries the bunt one more time, fouls this one off. So Bruggerman's going to be down 0-2 in the count. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Fiesel would have liked to see one Kelsey Bruggeman pull that bat back on that particular pitch because that was down in the dirt, but she committed, and now the count's 0-2. So Bruggeman back in the batter's box, down 0-2. Wendell's pitch on its way. We went able to stay alive by getting a piece of that one, sending it off towards the first base foul line. Bruggeman had a great at bat. Her first at bat of the game was down 0 2, like she is right now, and battled back to earn a base on balls. She's, she's going to make Wendell work hard here again. Sends this one back up. Wendell tries to field it off her glove, trying to get it over to first in time, but couldn't handle the throw was Hemmelgarn. And heads up base running that time by Natalie Evers as she advances to third. So now Marion Local, first and third. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth. And again, Allie Braun's going to come out and talk to her infield as a whole. That ball went right off of Wendell's glove, but she recovered quickly enough to get the out. But as you said, Hemmelgarn able to come up with it. So the first two runners have, first two batters have reached here for Marion Local, both on the air variety. And I think that's why Coach Bronze is talking again to the team. Hey, we've got to be able to field the, the softball ladies. Uh, we know we've got a really good pitcher. We can get a lot of strikeouts, but we don't want to have to rely on that. We need to execute defensively. And right now we've put ourselves in the position with Marion Local, uh, with runners on the corners. They make a couple uh, at-bats where they get good contact. And this game could change just like that. So let's see what happens here, Nate as the number nine hitter, Lydia Hess, steps into the batter's box for Marion Local. Hess struck out her last time at bat. Looking for a better outcome here. Tries to bump this one, bounces off the plate, goes back into foul territory, 0-1. She squared up very nicely, and uh, Cold Water has the wheel play on just a little bit. The third baseman's charging. Helmogarn staying home at first. So Wendell will need to field the right side of the infield on a bunt that's in fair territory. Let's see what we get here. Squares up for the bunt. Able to get her bat onto it on the ball, but this one also goes into foul territory. So Hess finds herself down 0-2 here in the count. Now, some coaches have a philosophy. I've asked you to bunt twice. I'm not going to quit asking you. You need to get the ball down in a pressure situation here. But I think in this situation, Coach Fiesel will take the bunt off and see what Hess can do. Hess that time, check swing through. And they're going to say safe on the throw to second. There's the slide. 
So they get the strikeout, and I think on the steal, the ball was there first, but the tag was high. Tag was definitely up on the shoulder of Kelsey Bruggeman. She was able to slide underneath it, and she was able to get her foot on the bag before the tag was applied. That makes her a runner at second. So we have runners on second and third now with one out, and we turn the lineup over with Cameron Swain stepping into the batter's box. So Cameron Swain came, in, came into the game, the leading hitter on this Marion local team, batting 431, looking for a timely hit here to try to get some runs on the board. That was a real nice pitch right there by Madison Wendell. Outer third, Swain slapping a little bit there. That's a hard pitch for a slapper to get a hold of on that outer third because her body's just naturally starting to go towards first base. Swain tries for the slap bump one more time. Swings through that one, finds herself down 0-2. So let's see how she does with an 0-2 count, the leading hitter for Marion Local at 431. See how she battles. Wendell's pitch is gonna be a ball, runs the count to one and two. Got her back foot right on that chalk line, giving her a lot of room. In that batter's box, give her the most amount of time to see the pitch. Another ball this time. Count is even at 2-2. Two -two. Great plate discipline right there. Because that one was hard to lay off of. That was right off the black of the outside corner. Great plate discipline by Cameron Swain. Swain just able to get a piece of that one to foul that one back to the fence. Stays alive, but the count's still at two and two. So Swain having a great at bat here against Wendell. Seeing a lot of pitches. Vasco in on third. Another foul ball by Swain, this time down the third baseline. She is staying alive. Making Wendell work. Yeah, the left side of the infield, they're playing in. As we said, Bosco in at third. Dana Zahn inside of the base path at shortstop. Respecting the speed of Swain as she's able to slap one their direction. Pitch is on its way as Wendell took something off of that one and that changeup falls in for strike three. Pulled the string on her, did one Madison Wendell and Cameron Swain had seen so many fastballs in a row. It looked like a melon, but she could not take that bat off her shoulder. Nice pitch by Madison Wendell. Big out for the Coldwater Cavaliers here. Two outs in the inning now. Allison Dirksen steps to the plate. She's going to roll this one down to the first baseline. First baseman jo Jordan Hemmelgarn able to handle that one to get the third out of the inning and Coldwater gets out of it without any damage. Yeah, they do a real nice job getting out of that jam. Runners on second and third, the first real legitimate scoring threat for Marion Local. Coldwater snuffs it out here in the top of the fifth inning. We played four and a half, Coldwater on top six, nothing, and they're coming to bat here in the bottom of the inning. Number 21, Kendra Clooney stepping to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Dirksen on the mound for Marion Local. Dirksen's first pitch going to be high for ball one. Kendra Clooney came into today's game batting 306. As so far, she is 0 for 2 here on the night. Yeah, with that 306 batting average, she's having a solid season. Clooney finds herself ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Lead off hitter here in the bottom of the inning for Coldwater. Clooney hits this one past the shortstop. He fielded, got back in quickly, so Clooney gonna be limited to the single, but Coldwater has the leading hitter on base. Yeah, solid base hit for Clooney. Up the middle as the Lady Cavs look to play add-on here in the bottom of the fifth frame. Our batter now is Rachel Schroyer. Second baseman sends this one back up the middle. Can't hold on to it. So all runners are gonna be safe. 
as Marion local second baseman Ava Evers had a hard time gathering that one in. Might have just been trying to go a little bit too quick that time, knowing she just needed to step on the bag and yep. forgot yep. to secure the ball first. Exactly. You're, when you field ground balls, you're just thinking one thing, field the ball, field the ball, field the ball. But in that situation, she had a chance to, as we see a bunt. Bosco lays down the bunt. That ball is going to go off of the first baseman's glove. Throw's going to come back. Runner's going to try to advance to second. And Coldwater, after all that, is going to have a run in and runner standing on second and third. Nice sacrifice bunt situation right there. And an error occurs as the throw would have beat her but was um, not fielded correctly by the first baseman. And as a result, a run scores and a runner's move up as Schroyer's on third and Vosco's on second now. You see Schroyer now, she goes in on the pass ball. She's able to score. So now it is eight, nothing cold water. Runner also advanced from second to third. So Zahn is up at the plate with a runner on third, looking to see if she can add to her team's total. Runner on third, nobody out. We've had a single and two errors in the inning thus far. But that was a solid sacrifice bump by Vosco. Did a nice job putting it down the third base line. Marion Local executed and then until they were not unable to catch the, the, the throw. But now their backs are up against the wall with a runner on third and nobody out. And the score eight to nothing, the run rule would be 10 runs after five. Coldwater, as we said, looking to play out on here. Zahn sees the ball four, so she's gonna trot down to first base. Back out to two on, nobody out. And you see Coach Arns coming out to the umpire. We're gonna have some changes here. As it looks like number 19, Sydney Grishop, is going to come to the plate for cold water. That is Dirksen's first walk of the game, I believe. She's been right around the plate all day long, but issues the base on balls there to Dana Zahn. So Riley yields. She's going to sit down. Grishop comes to the plate for the first time tonight. Grishop's been playing in the field in left field, so they're taking the flex player and putting her in the ninth spot for the designated player. Snap throw down the third there by Kelsey Bruggeman. Nice throw. Dirksen gets the strike at the plate. Throw down to third, not in time as Zahn moves up to second. Grishop holds back on her swing, runs the count to one and one. Now a hard hit ball to a gap could end this one on the run rule if Grishop's able to get a hold of one. Grishop, she's gonna get strike three called as that one was in the dirt but gets tagged out by the catcher. So Grishop heads back to the dugout, a strikeout victim. And Avery Kanapke is going to come to the plate as she hit a towering home run of, over the right field fence her last time up. And it looks like Russ Putoff is going to come out and talk to the Marion local flyers, the infield here at the circle. Again, they are in a tough situation. Down 8-0, to zero, runners on second and third. Coldwater's turning the lineup over. Avery Kanapke, her last at bat, she hit the home run over the right field fence and then Madison Wendell and Claire Steinke would follow. Monumental challenge right now for the Flyers to keep this game from ending here with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. So while they're talking about it, we will step aside and when we return, we will see if Mary Local can keep cold water off of the scoreboard. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. So after the meeting on the mound, Dirksen's going to go to work against Avery Kanapke. Kanapke 
in a home run or last time up. Looking to see if she can't replicate that or at least hit one hard somewhere to get a couple of runs in. Yeah, we do have first base open, but when you have Madison Wendell and Claire Steinke following Kanapke, you're going to pitch to Kanapke here in this situation. Yeah, there's no easier at-bat behind mm -hmm. for several players at this point for Coldwater. So Marion Local is just going to have to bear down here. Dirksen's going to have to go to work, and the defense is going to have to keep things in front of them. From the frying pan to the fire, do the situation right now. Dirksen finds herself ahead in the count here, one and two. One strike away from getting one out closer to being out of the tr trouble. Dirksen's pitch on its way. This one's going to be high. Two twos the count. The Coldwater Lady Cavs on the bases, and Kennedy Vosco and Dana Zahn both getting really good secondary leads after the ball's been pitched. Napke hits this one down to first base. Get the out at the bag. Nice slide on the inside. Here comes the runner. She's going to slide, and she's going to be safe as well. So even with the out at first base, a couple of throwing errors occur. Coldwater gets two runs, and that's going to make it 10-0 as Coldwater is going to come away with the run rule victory. 10-0. 10 to nothing in a situation where Coldwater, again, just consistently from inning to inning, put pressure on Marion Local defensively. And then, again, what can you say about Madison Wendell? She was outstanding in the circle, shutting out the Flyers, doing a real nice job to get the win. Coldwater is going to come back and play in the championship game of our Strikeout Cancer Classic be against either Fort Recovery or St. Mary's. And we'll have that right here on WSN. So we are going to wrap this one up. We'll step aside, get some final numbers together, and we come back, put a bow on this one. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Girls High School Softball on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater, Ohio. Today's scoreboard sponsor was Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. Today's game was also brought to you by Hillsman Automotive and Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. We appreciate all of our sponsors and everything that they do to help us bring the best local high school coverage of sports in the area. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and Dave had a great game here today. Marion Local gave it a valiant effort, but in the end, it was just way too much cold water. Yeah, cold water solid, uh, both offensively and defensively. You look at the numbers, Marion Local, they did not score. Uh, they had two hits. They committed five errors. They left five runners on base. Uh, for Coldwater, who improves their record to 16-6, and six, they scored 10 run runs in five innings. They had 10 hits, they committed three errors, and they left four runners on base. Allie Dirksen picks up the loss for Marion Local, who drops to 5-16. and 16. She pitched all five innings, faced 28 batters, uh, gave up 10 hits and those 10 runs, walked only one and struck out five. The winning pitcher, Madison Wendell. She is as good as advertised. Five innings pitched, faced 20 batters, gave up two hits, only walked one and struck out 10. So Coldwater advances to the championship game, the Strikeout Cancer Classic. And again, a really, really good ball game as far as her pitching in the circle, the defense that the Cavs played. Marion Local, they battled at the plate. But again, Wendell just too much with that right arm getting the, the win today in game number one. Yeah, Wendell did a fantastic job. She also got it done from the plate as well as most of the Cavalier offense did. Saw some timely hitting, some contributions all over the lineup. And then when it was all said and done, the uh, run rule victory goes to the Cavaliers. It's a beautiful day to play, too, and Coldwater's going to do just that as they'll stick around to play the championship game of the Strikeout Cancer Classic. It has been a great day. I'm glad we get to stick around and call one more. We appreciate everybody tuning in and checking out the game, and hopefully you'll get to see the championship game as well. One final time from Coldwater. Coldwater takes away the victory to move to 16-6 and six overall, 5-3 and three in conference play as they get the 10-0 victory over Marion Local. For Dave Bowen, I've been Nate Garlock, and for the rest of the WOSN crew, thanks for tuning in, and have a great day, everybody.